Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, Harrison is behind me on the bed. He has been sick. Um, he was sick last night, and he's been kind of sick today. So he's just back there watching his iPad. So if you hear something, that's what you hear. Um, I want to do an update video. Um, as you see in the title, um, that I'm going to talk about that at the end. But I, I, I need to do an update video. I haven't um, done an update video about speech um, or any of his therapy for a while. So that's what this is. And then uh, we'll talk about the the title um, in just a second. So, um, yeah, he has two, two therapies. He has speech therapy and he has occupational therapy. He's been doing speech therapy since um, the end of last summer, beginning of fall. And then we added occupational therapy late fall, early winter. I'd have to look at the exact dates, but um, he was definitely delayed in speech. So that was a no-brainer. But occupational, we added occupational for things like um, sensory, um, some sensory issues, mild. Um, she works with him on, like, fine motor skills and, um, you know, opening, doing buttons and opening things and, you know, that kind of stuff. And so um, she's been, he's been with the speech therapist a lot longer than he's been with his occupational therapist. His speech therapist is Katie, and his occupational therapist is Kate. <laughs> so it's, I, I get them mixed up sometimes when I'm talking. So anyway, I just want to show you some clips today from some of the sessions over the last, probably the last couple of months or so, um, some of our sessions with them, just to show you a little bit about what he does, um, hear, you know, get to hear him say some words and things like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to kick it off with... Um, him saying words so he has come so far um with his vocabulary and his speech now, is, is he still delayed absolutely most of the time i can't understand what he's saying but he's doing so good and so um this is just some of the ways she does um flashcards she does some computer games she does a lot of different ways that she um goes through words with him what's that that a bed yeah, that sounded like a T2. What? One more. Look, Harrison, it's a globe. It's a globe. Good. All right, I'll give you a break. What is that? Sure. It's a cube. It's a cube. It's a bib. It's a yeah. bib. Good. It's a fib. Nice, Harrison. It's a crab. He does have some mild sensory issues. Some of that is food. Um, he's very picky about what he eats or touches. Um, he used to not like snow or anything to touch his feet. Um, he doesn't like things on his hands. Um... He has a fixation with his passy, and it's not just because he's spoiled and gets a passy all the time. It's because it, it, it's sensory. It provides sensory input. Um, he needs sensory input. Um, so, anyway, we got this thing called a chewy from our therapist. Then he lost it like that day. But um, it's just something that is t is um, gives and he can chew on to give him sensory input. And he actually has, since we've done that, even though we lost it after like a day, He's been doing pretty good about not getting and asking for the passy as much as he used to. A dime. A dog. Good. A donkey. A donkey. A Julius. Good. That's the desert. That's a harder one, huh? What about this one? You like that, Chewy, huh? This it might one. give him that sensory input just enough uh -huh. because that's the same. I feel like it's the same kind of as his passy, the same give. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if he was chewing on the passy though, or if he was like, you know what I mean, like yeah. just sucking on the passy because sometimes that calms kids down to like the sucking pattern. Right. That seems to. Ready? Five more, Harrison. What's this one? Yeah. Good. 
so yeah, the Chewy was good. I don't know if I'll get another one because he's doing really well with it at the pasty. He does ask for it, except for he gets it at nap time and bedtime, but he does ask for it sometimes. Um, and I'll just say, nope, no pasty. It's not night nap time. Most of the time he's pretty good with it. Every once in a while he has to have it, but most of the time he's pretty good about it. Um, so the Chewy did help with that. But you'll see in this next clip um, some behavioral issues that he has. Sometimes he doesn't like a challenge. He doesn't like to do what he's supposed to do. And so he'll, and, and you'll see, she just touches his leg and he's like, ow, that's a little bit of sensory issues. Can I have it? Um, that was not nice. Yeah. Make we shouldn't throw sad. things, huh? Ow! Sad. Ready? Last one. What is that? Do you know? A doll. A doll. Good. A lot of what Katie does is models speech. We do it as well as parent as well as parents. Um, so a lot of the things that she does is interactive play, and she has games and puzzles and toys that she just uses to model speech and um, teach him how to to talk through those devices and activities. Flag. Yeah, flag. Yeah. Good job. What is this? Robot. It's a robot, yeah. One of the things that's kind of helped, um, I don't do it as often as I should, and I think if I did it a little bit more, it would be easier, but um, sh sometimes she'll set a timer. Both both the therapists do that, um, you know, so that we know that, but, you know, five minutes or one minute or two minutes, and then we're all done, and then it kind of prepares him that we're going to move on to something else. Okay. Can you press this right here? Thank you. All right, that means we're all done with blocks. Time to clean up, and, no. then, it's, and then it's my turn. Clean yeah. up, clean up, everybody, no. everywhere. Clean up, clean up, everybody, do their share. Good job, Harrison. Good job, baby. Yeah. Helicopter. Oh, the robot fell down. Can you put him in? Thank you, all the people. So this particular day, he was having a little bit of a meltdown. And so I, um, knowing that he likes deep pressure, um, I just kind of held him and applied pressure, uh, squeezed him a little bit, applied pressure to his arms, and it really did help to relax him. And sock. Purple socks. Hi, hold it. Okay, leave them alone. Leave them there. They're gonna watch you. We're still doing our Here, sit up. Ah! Ready? Are you hiding? Where's Harrison? Come on, let's do five more. <clears throat> you know, Kate was talking yesterday about um. This. There's a moose in there. Beep beep beep. Can I move this book little? and cars? Yeah. yeah. Thank First you, bud. And cars. <gasps> J is for jar. J. Go ahead. J, J, jar. How about K, K is for? What is that? K, K, K. Kangaroo. Kangaroo. This is one of your favorite words. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Oh, lollipop. Yeah, L is for lollipop. <laughs> Here it comes. The moose is getting ready. M is for? <gasps> Mouse. Mouse. What? what? Yo yo. Nice. Yo 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 yo. Z is for zebra. Find the zebra. Cats. I like cats. Okay. So that's some of the stuff that we work with with speech. And that's Katie. And then Kate is our occupational therapist. She's really good at what she does. I will say this, that um, occupational therapy is more challenging for Harrison. Speech is kind of fun. It's mostly just playing and doing games and working on speech. But occupational seems to be a little bit more challenging. Therefore, a lot more resistance. Um, Kate is really good. She doesn't give in. She makes him complete whatever task she asks him to do. 
Um, one of the biggest problems is putting clothes on and putting shoes and socks on. He just doesn't want to do it because it's challenging and he, he doesn't want to do it. And so we have meltdowns and um, a lot of resistance when it comes to that. Um, but overall, um, she works with motor skills, behavior, strengthening him, his skills. Um, but it is challenging and he does kind of shut down sometimes. But she keeps with him and she stays with him. Um, and... Um, yeah, he's doing better. Good job. Here, Harrison. Open. Oh. Oh. Yay, buttons. Wow. Here, open. Harrison? He's definitely better than he used to be. Yeah. He's closer. And he'll try for longer. Good job. Do you want help? Oh, oh please. Oh. Oh. Harrison, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. You want a big hug? You want a big hug? Tight hug? Ready? Come here. Ready? One, two, three. Giving him that deep pressure when he's upset oh, um, should yeah. help calm him down a little bit too. Oh. One more. Oh, oh, yeah. Hit the red one. One of those things that she's taught us is that he needs sensory input. If you've heard me talk about the fact that he likes car crashes, um, he, he, he watches car crashes all the time. That's what he wants 90% of the time. And he likes to crash his cars. And one of the reasons she thinks is because he needs sensory input. And so therefore he is getting sensory input. So one of the things that she's taught us to do is to take the big ball that we have. Do you like the ball? We run the ball over his body. Also, I'll set him on it and roll him on it. And um, that's helped a lot with kind of giving him some sensory input. Three, four, five. Here, roll over, lay on your belly. Good job, ready? Here, move your arm. There you go. Okay, ready? One, two, he loves three, it. four, five. Yay! You like that? Yeah, cat. He's like, <laughs> okay. I thought he was like, okay. You're kind friend. of like, I mean, pushing. Yeah. Quite a I just want to talk to you guys for a few minutes um, about what happened this weekend and some of our initial, kind of initial thoughts about it. She wasn't able to come Wednesday, so she came Saturday this weekend. So she usually brings stuff for him to play with. Um, you know, she works with him on different sounds and words and things like that. We've got a really great relationship with her. She works for an outside company called Solus. Uh, both of our therapists come from them. And um, a, like a private company that does therapy from all kinds of different therapies. But anyway, um, she came Saturday and she came in and sat down. Luckily, Sean was here. And um, she just sat down. She sits down on the floor and, and works with Harrison. So she sat on the floor and she said, I thought today we would just have an open conversation about autism. And it just kind of like threw me for a loop. Like, um, I just didn't expect it, I guess, especially coming from her. I mean, which, which is not a bad thing. Like she's, she's worked with Harrison a lot and this is nothing new to us. Like we've always said that 
we feel like a lot of he has a lot of tendencies that resemble what used to be called Asperger's, um, which is like highly intellectual. He's his his testing that we had in the fall. Um, he was above average in all of his pre academics, so counting and colors and numbers and letters and all that stuff. He's really ahead in. He's he's really high in that, but he was low in speech and social and all that kind of stuff. And what do you have hanging from your shirt? He sat down. And so it just kind of was like, whoa, okay. Like we've all, me and Sean and family and friends have always known that the, the, the Asperger's aspect, which is high functioning, you know, um, but it wasn't on the autism spectrum. Well, now it is like that. Now they have done away in diagnosis with Asperger's and it's all autism. And it's not that I have, I have a negative connotation of autism. There's a lot of great kids out there that have autism. If he has autism, that's fine. That's great. We'll work through it. You know, I hate, I hate the labels, but, um, and every kid is different and every kid is unique. And so sometimes I feel like you can diagnose a kid, but every, every kid is individual and, and, and they develop their own pace. Some kids don't develop like they should and some do. And so it's not that I have a negative connotation of it or anything like that. I just wasn't expecting it, I think. And so, um, nobody ever thinks, I don't think anybody that has a child that falls on the autism spectrum, whether high functioning or low functioning, ever expects to have a child and just expects them to be autistic you know, or autistic or, you know, have autism. And so I just was like, whoa. So we talked about it. I was like, Sean, you need to come in here because Sean has some pretty strong opinions about it as well. And so we just sat here with her and just talked to her about it. She, um, She's on our side, so it's not like she's trying to force anything on us. Uh, she just wanted to talk about it. She wanted to know how we felt about it. We, she wanted, you know, to tell us how she felt about it. And, you know, right now, um, he's still kind of young. He's he's three. He's not even three and a half yet. Um, so he's still developing. But there are definitely, and we all agree, that there are definitely red flags. Red, There's flags and indicators that do point to autism or as I would say Asperger's um he's oh sorry Whoa. my husband called um so anyway what was I saying Whoa. so there are definitely indicators and red flags and things like that that point to it I would think more of Asperger's but you know Asperger's is autism now I guess so um you know she doesn't diagnose she said most parents actually ask her about it and ask about getting tested so she just wanted to talk about it. She just wanted to, you know, talk to us about it. Kind of just like an open conversation, I guess. If you're out there and you have a child that has autism, I don't mean it anything negatively at all. I'm pretty sure that you were shocked when you first heard it too. Um, it's just it's just part of life. It's just developmental. It's every child development develops differently. Nobody did anything wrong, you know, it just it's just the way it is.